My mind is blank. All thoughts are gone. My house is empty. My heart is broken. But how did I end up like this? To every hurtful ending, there is a happy beginning. I will try my best to tell you my story. My childhood, I guess, was okay. Because my mom did not truly make it through college, I mean through high school, she made education a big part of raising me. By the time I was five, I had a reading level of a ninth grader. I did, I don't have much of a memory of my father. Mother kicked him out when I was younger. So my mother raised me by herself till I got to the third grade. Then she met a man who has been my father from then on. Please don't mind my rudeness, but since I'm telling you about me, and if I don't give you names of some people along this broken yellow brick road, do not get upset. I grew up a nerdy only child with no friends, but had an act for football. So through my days of schooling, not only was I made fun of for being a very smart student and called the teacher's pet, I was also praised for my gifts of playing football and being called All-American and was MVP of all through my fourth year, four years of college, high school. Well, not all four, only the first two because in the end of my sophomore year, I was transferred to a school in the UK called Newville. Because I never had friends, I drowned myself in <coughs> school, school work and sports, but this time it was lacrosse. For some who don't know about lacrosse, just think about soccer, football, and hockey all rolled into one, and man was a grueling. It did not matter though, because when summer training in was over and my junior year started, I was the captain of the red and black Newville werewolves. To say the least, I enjoyed myself, but who couldn't? The high school was just like a college, on campus housing, day and night classes, with fun parties. I went to them because it was a job thing to go to some if not all parties. But back to school work in which I drive myself in. I took a lot of classes and the only time I was not in class was because of the three following reasons. It was Sunday, practicing with my team and my own personal practice that I do in the early mornings by myself. And this is really where the story begins. After a few weeks when I was outside in the morning, I felt like I was being watched. At first I thought it, it may be an overseer of the grounds making sure nothing bad was going on. But one rain-filled morning, I saw her. More, more like heard her step into a puddle to the right of some bushes about four feet or so from the field. Need some help there, I asked. Maybe a little, she said. Her name was Myra. She had also transferred here because of her abilities. She was a cheerleader and a star soccer player. And boy, was she beautiful. Five foot eight, slick black hair with light brown <coughs> tips and bangs, emerald green eyes, and a smile that could stop time. Before long, we were the, that cute little athletic couple everybody talked about. When came graduation, we both tied for ballet, valedictorian and honorary athletes. My winning the local, state, and national school of lacrosse, and her winning the same thing for the girls' soccer and cheerleading. And may luck have it, we both got into the same private school in the United Kingdom that had different branches of colleges that focused on various things. Because I had a multiple career plan, I was spent one year in the UK, one year in China, one year in Japan, and one year in New York. During the holidays, me and Myra would alternate on whose family we would visit. The first time was her family, who mostly lived in New Mexico and Los Angeles. I can tell as you read this, you you're thinking I'm not very good at giving detailed information. If you have strong problems about this, I have some advice for you. Stop reading them. It's my story, so that means I can have it the way I want it. So as I was saying, after those four years, me and Myra moved in together in New York, both with degrees in psychology and foreign languages. Myra took a job as a marriage counselor, and I also got a job as a psychologist. But I spent two more years in school and got my degree in plane and auto mechanics. After two more years of being a wimp, I finally asked Myra to marry me. Of course she said yes. So four years have passed. I'm living a good life with my wife and my twins, William and Maria. Then it happened. I was at work one night. I just found out the night before that Myra and I was going to have another child. So I was putting 
my work faster is the last of my uh, files together so that I can go home to my wife and kids. I had finished work and made it to the house around 10.30 p.m. No one was home. I called her job. She was not there. I called her phone. There was no answer. Right before I could call someone else, there was a knock at the door. I went and opened the door thinking she had lost her house keys like she did sometimes. But on the other side of the door was not my wife and two kids, but a man of his late 30s or early 40s by the name of Officer Jones. Apparently at about 9.55-59, there was a routine traffic stop. Officer Jones and his partner, Officer Reed, stopped a male driver that may have had ex expired license plates. Officer Reed walked to the driver's side door while Jones ran the plates. But before Jones even hit enter in the computer, he heard a shot. He jumped out of the car and saw that Reed was shot in his left arm and his gun was gone. At this time, Myra was driving by with the kids, and before Jones had time to react, the suspect jumped in front of the car, of her car. When she stopped, the man shot her and then opened the door and threw her body onto the ground and jumped in and proceeded to drive off. Jones called in backup and medical help, then he went after the man. Even though Officer Reed was hurt, he tended to Myra until more help came. Jones was right behind the man till the unsuspected happened. The man in my wife's car and my kids in the back seat lost control and drove off the bridge into the river. They had fished the car out. They had drowned. Not the man who had took my wife's car. He was picked up a little downstream from where the car fell in. No, he is very much alive. But my kids, my kids, they drowned. They died. Myra made it to the hospital, but by 10.59, she died along with our unborn son yet to be named. Now here I am. It's the four year anniversary of that day at home after my visit to their graves. The seasons may change, but the pain and sorrow still remains. This is my story, just like dark chocolate, short and sweet with a bitter aftertaste. But life goes on. <laughs>